Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a really cool Western Electric Glow Phone. This is an original and this is Gary's equipment from Oklahoma and this is the initial checkout of this telephone and he's got a note with this unit and he's talking about the lights light because what we have back here is the bottom portion of the telephone and that has a light tray in it and that is for the numbers because when the transformer is plugged in and you lift the handset the numbers will light up and I'm not sure that the video is picking it up or if you're familiar with a glow phone but you can kind of see the numbers through the front screen here and we have one two three four five six and so on and basically he's talking about in the letter that when he received this telephone it did ring at first and now the ringer doesn't work and also when he picks up the handset he's hearing a buzzing noise that never goes away and he cannot access the keypad and he cannot dial out since this is the initial checkout and we're already in the process of troubleshooting the issue with dialing out we'll be concerned with the ring cycle later we're not going to plug the unit in to the transformer because we know that the lights already work and we're going to run through a little bit about what's going on and explain why he hears a tone or a buzzing noise when he tries to dial out a number with this telephone and I also want to mention our amplified pickup we use this in troubleshooting, repairing, and on our final checkouts. It's amplified so that you can hear the receive audio. And I have an amplifier back by the video. It has a button on it. And when I press the button, I can give dial tone or take it away at any time. And since it's an open amplifier, it is prone to any kind of static interference or noise in the atmosphere and if you hear any of that when we're using the amplifier it will be coming from the amplifier the noise in the atmosphere or interference and not the telephone but you will hear a noise that's actually a tone or a buzz however you want to describe it now what we want to do is we want to use the analyzer so we're going to plug the telephone into the analyzer and we're going to go ahead and let you listen to the noise that Gary is hearing when he tries to use this telephone. And that's the noise. If you notice, it seized an 8 on the analyzer, and that would be your transmit light. So since there's noise on the line, it's pretty bright. And we're going to go ahead and unplug our telephone. This telephone is trying to dial an 8. And I can explain to you exactly what happened. We have not cleaned the front panel. And if you notice right here, that would clean up a little bit. Something hit the front screen and basically distorted our screen because the clearance between the plastic liner that they have inside, which has conductive material drawn onto it, the clearance is very small. And anytime one of these numbers gets pressed, that creates a continuity to the circuit and dials that number. So anytime you distort the screen, and the backing plate you're going to actually be dialing a number and since this screen hard to see by the eye 
has been distorted, most likely from something dropping onto the screen, you're in a sense dialing an 8. Now, that can also happen with expansion and contraction. And this telephone has been around for a while. It's got a, quite a few years on it. And from the plastic distorting, expansion and contraction can also cause that. Now, we're going to also show you when we plug the telephone in again, when I start dialing numbers, you're going to hear the tone, but when I start dialing the numbers, you're going to see that 8 flash. And the reason being is that you are disturbing the circuit, and just for a, a moment, it wants to try to dial another number, but it can't because the 8 is actually locked up. So we're going to go ahead and plug the unit in. We have our 8. Now, if you watch that 8, it will blink when I press a 1. It's going to blink again when I hit 2. When I hit 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, star, 0, and pound. And the reason it doesn't blink when I hit 8 is because 8 is the number that's locked up. So we need to get into the front screen, maybe, and see what we can do to rectify the situation. There's a few things I want to try with a screen before we actually have to part the screen from the back cover. So we're going to be working on that. We have a lot of work that we need to do. We'll come back and get some more video as we move forward in the repair of this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we're in the middle of the process of repairing this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone and we want to go over a little bit about what's going on. Now earlier we showed the issue with the screen and we're working on that. We also want to show the main PC board if you've never seen the inside of one of these telephones before. I want to give you a look at the main PC board and then the solder side of the PC board and that gives you a look at what that looks like. Now we're working on the issue of this telephone not ringing and when the telephone did ring and work properly it's almost kind of like a electronic warble or piezo buzzer sound but it actually comes out of a receiver capsule that's a Western Electric receiver capsule and they did that in the early days when they started designing the piezo buzzer kind of a warble noise and they used receiver capsules that basically looked like this and it was Western Electric equipment and then later on they became piezo buzzers which is a different component altogether so We've troubleshooted this board and we know that the IC that controls that warble noise for the ring cycle is bad. And you're not going to just go anywhere like a supplier and find this IC chip. So we talked it over with Gary and we kind of came up with the idea that, hey, wouldn't it just be cool if this telephone had a real bell in it? Because you associate early Western Electric equipment with the bell sound. And so what we're going to do is design out a situation where we remove the receiver capsule for the warble sound and install a bell. We're going to incorporate our off and on switch and we will most likely be able to get our volume control involved in that circuit that we design out. So we're going to go ahead and work on that issue and we'll come back and get some more video as we move forward in the repair 
and now conversion of this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we're in the middle of the process of repairing this Western Electric Glow Phone and we're in the middle of working on the keypad. And so basically what you see is we've taken the keypad apart. We have our screen and then our backboard and we have conductive material on the backboard and then we have conductive material on the screen. And earlier we showed that there was an issue with the number eight. And so basically we could not manipulate the screen far enough away from the backboard to keep the eight as a consistent not dialing out. So the eight is locked up. And now what we're going to have to do is so we have some uniform to it, we have to make sure that we keep the screen back away from the backboard enough so that the 8 will not lock up and try to dial out. We're going to have to shim the entire backboard like they already have, but we need to make it wider so that the 8 doesn't touch and lock up and try to dial out. I want to go ahead and show you our front panel, that's our screen, and then our backboard, not simple to take this apart, it's very difficult, and we took a chance and we were able to get it apart And that's the look at the back of the screen. And then the front of our screen. So we're going to go ahead and finish this work up. And then we'll try it out, see how it works. And we'll come back and get some more video as we move forward in the repair of this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we're in the middle of the process of repairing this Western Electric Glow Phone and I want to show a little bit about what's going on. Now, we're working on a little bit of everything on this telephone. It had a lot of issues and I want to show our ringer element that was in this unit And that was removed because the circuit was damaged and it was not working properly and we installed a bell. Now we talked about that earlier in the video. Our volume control for the bell was incorporated to our new ringing circuit and our off and on switch for the bell also was incorporated. So that all works like it did originally, only now we have a bell in our ring circuit. This unit also had an issue with the receive. It was unstable. Now we've also added some wiring to this PC board because we're going to incorporate a receive and transmit circuit because the proprietary parts that are associated with the transmit and receive are proprietary to this main PC board and there is no parts available really for this unit. So we'll give you a look at that. And once we incorporate that circuit we're also going to be upgrading our receiver capsule and our transmit. Now this is a transmitter and it has the three connections. Now most transmitters only have two like a mic element and circuits with the three connected 
transmitter always seem to have issues and since the parts are not available for this unit we're going to be upgrading the transmitter also so the transmit is looped into the receive and every once in a while you will see that type of circuit in a telephone but they did not use it very often because it did not hold up it did not stand the test of time and the circuits failed I also want to show you that we gained access into the handset and if you've never seen the inside of one of these units this is what the handset looks like on the inside so we're gonna finish this work and then we'll come back and get some more video as we move forward in the repair and conversion of this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and we are finished up with the repair of this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone and we're ready to start our final checkout. Now, we also want to mention a little bit about what went on, which was a whole lot. Basically, we had to rebuild the handset. The receiver capsule was changed the transmitter was changed because we had to incorporate a transmit and receive circuit and get away from the original circuit because that was faulty it was unreliable and it was not a good design we also installed a bell instead of the original warble type electronic ring cycle that you would hear originally and we went to a bell the bell circuit that we installed we also tied in the volume control for the bell which is at the back of the telephone it's a slide switch we also incorporated the on and off button for the bell so that can be turned off either by the slide switch because that's an up and down volume or by the off and on switch for the bell. We also went through the screen. That was taken apart. It was not meant to be taken apart, but you have to make a decision. Do you want to repair the telephone, or do you want it to work, or do you want it to just sit around and look at it? And so we had to make a decision to go into the screen to repair that issue. Now, we did get a little bit of cloudiness on the screen. There's nothing you can do about it, but we had to get into the screen. And so the screen basically rides or floats over the top of the backboard that's inside the telephone. And it has to be that way because if you glued the screen back down, you would never be able to get back into it in case you have to make any repairs. So that's just the way it turned out. It's the way it has to be done. And the telephone is usable now as before. You couldn't use it at all. We also had to eliminate the original tone generator circuit. It became unstable and unreliable. We incorporated a tone generator circuit for this telephone. So everything has been worked on on this telephone. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use the analyzer and we're going to start a ring cycle. Now the volume control for the ring cycle which is at the back of the telephone is incorporated into the circuit so it does work and I'll go ahead and start the ring cycle. I want to go ahead and turn it down So you can turn it all the way down or all the way up. I also want to turn the switch off on our next ring cycle. And turn it on. Now we can go ahead and give you some dial tone. I'm going to turn the dial tone down. When we rebuilt the handset, I was able to incorporate a volume control switch so we basically have normal and then a loud so we'll go ahead and give you some dial tone and then I'll turn it up
So that's high and pretty much medium. High, medium. Now we want to walk through our numbers. If you watch the analyzer, now when you're dialing this, you want to be firm on each number because this front panel is kind of floating on the backboard. So you want to be firm and you also want to be gentle. And, you know, it might take a little bit to get used to. We'll go ahead and turn on our amplifier. We'll do a one again. I'm going to end in a two. Now I want to use the transmitter. We're going to go ahead and transmit into the handset. If you watch that red light on the analyzer, every time you see that red light on the analyzer, that's an indication of 100% modulation on transmit. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> hello, hello. So now that we know that this unit is ringing in on a ring cycle, our volume control is working for the ring cycle, our on and off switch is working for the ring cycle circuit, our transmit is working, our receive is working, and our amplifier in the button on the handset, the switch is working. We can dial out. We're going to go ahead and press this button on the switch box. That gives us a line out, totally takes the analyzer out of the situation, and we can call a time and temp number. I had a local time and temp number that we would call and utilize all the time and they discontinued that time and temp number. We're going to be dialing time and temp numbers that are basically in the area, but they have a long distance number. We want to go ahead and give you some dial tone. And we'll go ahead and dial one of those numbers. We can go ahead and hang up. Now I'm going to use the high side and we'll call another time and temp number. I don't know these numbers by heart, so I'm happy to look at them on a piece of paper. The time and temperature is coming up after this. Want to change the way you watch TV? Get rid of cable. As a limited time offer, you may also qualify to receive a $100 Visa gift card when you sign up today. Press 1 now to be connected and get better TV today. Today is Thursday, January 26th. The current time, 6. 14 p.m. and the temperature 32 degrees. We can hang our unit up. We're going to call one other number. We're going to call my number and it's going to be busy. So we'll go ahead and give you some dial tone. We'll make that call. Hang our unit up. Now that we know that this really cool Western Electric Glow Phone has been repaired and converted, we can return it to Gary and they can enjoy this telephone. He's never been able to use it. It never worked for him properly. And I'm sure it's going to look great no matter where it's used. This is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com.
hyphen-telephone.com, and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.